a little bit more about the process for registering to vote in the primary if you are registered with no party preference, okay? Um, because some people had some questions about that. Right now, that's the single most popular choice to register to vote in Arizona. 38% of our registered voters are registered with no party preference. That's what we commonly call independence. Okay? If you are an independent voter or registered with no party preference, you will not be able to vote in the primary election on August 30th unless you request a party ballot. When you request a party ballot to vote in the primaries, this doesn't change your status as an independent voter. You're still an independent, but as an independent, you won't get to vote in the primary unless you pick one. You can pick Republican or Democrat. You can pick Libertarian or Green, but you have to pick one. To vote for mayor, if you want to vote for mayor and you're registered as an independent, you won't be able to do that unless you request one of these ballots. So, so you need to do that. Any questions about that? The deadline to do that is really soon. Really soon. <laughs> it's August 1st. So this is July 28th. You've got a couple days. But we have telephones. Isn't that great? You just pick up your phone, you call the county recorder, and you tell them which ballot you want. By the way, you cannot, re you cannot get your primary ballot at servicearizona.org. Uh, you can't get it by, by going online. So you, what you need to do, if you're registered as an independent and you want to vote for mayor or you want to vote for city council, you need to call the Avapai County recorder and tell them which one you want. OK, it's kind of tricky but you're all astute, I can tell, and you've got it now. Good evening, and welcome to the Philip England Set Performing Arts Center. Um, my name is Andrea Houchard. I'm a proud member of the League of Women Voters of the Greater Verde Valley, and really happy you're all here tonight for the Mayoral Candidates Forum for Camp Verde. You wouldn't want to be outside anyway. Did you hear that? It's good to be in here. Okay. David Boyley and Charlie German are our two candidates for mayor. And our goal this evening is for you to listen and learn from both of them. These gentlemen will give opening statements. Those will be two minutes long. Following those opening statements, we have some prepared questions from the league, but what we'd really love are questions from you. So you should all have index cards. If you want one and don't have one, raise your hand and someone from the league will come over and give you that, and we will take your questions up here. We'll conclude this in an hour, and then after the um, questions, both of these candidates will have an opportunity to make a closing statement as well. So without further ado, um, Charlie German, please give us your opening statement. Thank you, and I'd like to thank the uh, League for setting up this forum. Appreciate everybody uh, also coming out tonight. Um, in my opening statements, I'm going to cover the reasons for running, and first of all, it was because of a number of people that I uh, highly respect and have admired over a number of years have asked me again to run for office as mayor. And secondly, I believe it's very important for Camp Verde to be able to create jobs and economic growth in a healthy business environment. My qualifications is that I've been a resident of Camp Verde for over 60 years and have administrative experience through my military service in the United States Navy in the Naval Communications. My community service of over 10 years with the Camp Verde Volunteer Fire Department as elected secretary treasurer and as fire chief. I also served 12 years with the Camp Verde Unified School Board as a member, a clerk, and president. I've also spent 13 years with the CV Library Association and the Camp Verde Library Endowment as a board member and president for a few years. I was also an elementary educator and administrator for 33 years in the Verde Valley. I held a Bachelor of Science degree in elementary education and a master's degree in educational administration with a dual certificate as an elementary principal and superintendent. The top issues, and there are many of them, so I boiled 
uh, a number of them down to just a few. Economic development and sustainability, including the improvement of infrastructure, which provides the environment in which businesses can invest within our community, bringing jobs, shopping, and additional services to our community. Obviously, there are a number of issues which dot the horizon for our council. Water issues, flood issues, maintenance of our street, as well as and development of additional recreational facilities. We'll need to ask you to stop there, please. Oh, good, okay. Thank you. David Boyley, could we have your opening statement, please? Thank you for the League to run this forum, and, and good evening to everybody in the audience. My name is David Boyley. Could you put the microphone a little bit closer? My name is David Boyley, and my reasons for running for mayor of Camp Verde is to help work with the council in directing goal setting and help with accomplishment by st staying focused for achievement and communication directly to the manager. Economic development and infrastructure are some of the most important areas of concern. My background is that of multiple levels of management with companies such as Warner Lambert Company, now called Pfizer Pharmaceutical, and Lever Brothers USA, which is part of Unilever Worldwide, and my own business for 11 years. I also worked for the Veterans Administration and then the Department of Defense with the Soldier Readiness Program at Fort Campbell. All positions required the ability to work well with people, no matter the responsibilities. I view Camp Verde as an important center to the Verde Valley with its natural access to via Route 260 East and West and Route 17 North and South. Opportunities upon us to develop the city of Camp Verde in improving its tax base to lessen the financial burden to the citizens. How that is achieved is up to the council to direct the town manager in the direction of accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now start with questions from the audience, and David Boyley will ask you to answer this question first. Pretend it's late Saturday night, or even perhaps tonight, and there are thunderstorms and they are flooding L Verde Lake homes. What steps do you take? Well, my familiarity with that situation has already occurred. <laughs> the town has put in that situation very much. Um, and we'd have to get uh, some responders there to make sure that the people are being taken care of and the flooding is, is going to limit the damages that it does. Thank you. Charlie? Well, first of all, we would have a response from the neighborhoods to our marshal's office. And then depending on how big the event happens to be, we would also uh, staff the mayor and the manager may be involved depending on the extent of it. And that would activate our emergency management uh, team in, in, uh, at the county level in Prescott. And that would automatically uh, start a cascade of information and potential staging for whether it's a major flood or whether it's a smaller one that could be handled locally. So there's a number of uh, procedures to go through, but it would involve the initial start with the neighborhood and our marshal's office, and then it would communicate on up. Thank you. Charlie German will ask you to take the next question first. Did you support the recent recall election three to four months ago? If so, what were your reasons? And how can you justify the $20,000 expenditure for the election? No, I did not support the uh, recall election. And uh, I didn't because of a number of reasons. One, I didn't think it was a prudent expenditure of funds which if all four of us had been recalled, it could have cost us a total of $30,000. And it was less than six months to finish the normal uh, election cycle to begin the one we're in right now. So I, didn't, I did not support it. In fact, I vocalized quite uh, against it. Thank you. David. I'm really not familiar with the details of the recall. And the question, did, you, did, did you support it? 
but I believe I supported it uh, on the basis that um, we need to have people that are on the council um, that are considered, I guess, competent and uh, able to do the job. And how do you justify the $20,000 expenditure? I don't. Okay, David Boyley will ask you to take the next question first. What experience or input can you bring to Camp Verde as mayor that will unite the member board that will be elected? As I stated in my opening remarks, uh, my background with multiple levels of people um, on tasks and uh, establishing priorities and goals um, was directed to accomplishment. Um, in the corporate world, um, the word is accomplish, not a, any other way. If it's, if, it, if it's in an analysis, it's deemed necessary to reassess the direction. Um, and the goal is either um, too big for the time um, and not accomplishable, uh, accomplishable for uh, a number of reasons, then we have to redirect ourselves. Uh, and that's the same method we would apply I would bring to bring to apply to the council. Establish the goal. Let's do the um, find the in, the information out that we need, and then um, make a decision from there. Thank you, Charlie. What experience or input can you bring to Camp Verde as mayor that will unite the member board that will be elected? Well, I think. Um my ability to analyze situations. And one of the major things that I've lived here since 1951, and I never was able to figure out why Camp Verde did not grow as other communities have. And uh, we've been incorporated since 1986. We're just now beginning to see things happen economically. And although we've had uh, downturns in the economy, uh, I believe that being able to analyze those kinds of situations and bringing that uh, as a mayor to the council for total council discussion uh, is healthy for the community because there are seven different viewpoints uh, on any particular issue. And I think the more discussion that we have and the, the ability of those individuals to come to a conclusion, the stronger we are as a community. Thank you. And Charlie German will take the next question with you going first. And this is another question about the climate of the council working together. Um, we had a lot of these questions, but it's obviously on the minds of the people that are here. So I think we need to go ahead with these. How would you rate the current performance of the seated town council? And what changes, if any, would you like to see? Well, there. It depends on what comes before the council. I think the main thing that I would, would actually change is we heard a lot of discussion from the council uh, candidates earlier this evening. And um, hearing the constituents is paramount to a democracy. But it's the responsibility of the council member not to try and individually solve those uh, issues with a particular neighborhood or with a particular constituency. We're not like the Board of Supervisors where we have a particular geographical section that we represent. We represent the entire community, but it's important for that council member when they find those issues to bring it to the whole council early on so that we can assess through staff as to whether we need to make a code change or ordinance change that would be necessary, that would be applied equally across the entire community. I've seen it in my years, in the last 35 years, we're coming up on the 35th anniversary, of seeing things that were preferential in some areas and not so much in other areas. We need to have that applied equally across the board. Thank you. Thank you. David, how would you rate the current performance of the seated town council, and what changes, if any, would you like to see? Well, <clears throat> I'd, like, I'd like to see the process of the council changed. Uh, we're maintaining the open meeting law. Um, 
I'm familiar with my experience with the Citizen Advisory Board um, where issues are brought to the board uh, and discussed, but the public has heard specifically on that issue um, before the council goes into a voting process. Um, if that's a possible change that can occur, um, I would be a proponent of that, um, that process because everything is on the table and exposed all at once. And then the council in a body is voting on that particular project. Thank you. Could I give a little clarification as to what state law is on that? Sure, you can have one minute, and then um, if David Boyle would like to reply, he can have one minute. One of the things that I am, am working towards, we've had some pushback from some council members. I would like to see, as we do now, uh, a card that's filled out for items not on the agenda. I would also like to have that for items that are on the agenda. The agenda comes out approximately Thursday before the following Wednesday meeting. And uh, the state law requires the council to deliberate in public. It is not a meeting for the public. It's a meeting in the public where council makes their deliberations. I've always believed in, in uh, community support with that, but to make it flow as far as the meeting goes, to have a card where people can sign up and say they want to speak to a certain issue, I would certainly be open to that. Thank you. David Boyley, would you like to reply? I think that's exactly what I was talking about, um, that the topic was being discussed openly from, and the citizens' opinions are being heard before the council deliberates and votes. Thank you. Uh, this next question is addressed specifically to David Boyley, so I'll give him two minute, up to two minutes to respond to this, and then Charlie German, you'll have one minute to comment if you choose to do so. The question is, how do you support a recall but not support the funding for it? I believe the recall probably shouldn't have occurred in the first place. And that's why I would not support the funding for it. Thank you. Charlie, would you like to comment? I would agree with David. Thank you. OK, Charlie German, you'll take the next question first. Where do you see Camp Verde as part of the Verde Valley? Do you feel Camp Verde should be proactive and keep the old town ways? Or do you see the need for change, and why? Well, I think we've seen change. And one of the major areas that I've seen change and living here as long as I have, we have been rather tribal in our communities within the uh, Verde Valley. But with the issue of safety and mobility and economic development with the highway project of 260, we had uh, nine different political units come together and speak as one voice in Flagstaff with uh, ADOT to get this off of the ground for the realignment of 260. So I think we've seen a lot of change, and I think with de developing and continuing that relationship with those other communities, we can no longer stand shoulder to shoulder and ignore each other and not realize that we have a profound effect on one another in the Verde Valley. Thank you. David? To repeat the question, please? Of course. Where do you see Camp Verde as part of the Verde Valley? Do you feel Camp Verde should be proactive or keep the old town ways? Do you see the need for change? And if so, why? I see Camp Verde as being the center of the Verde Valley because that's basically where it is, especially with the intersections of the highway, the way they fall. Um, it can attract a lot of people from the highway, and the first stop could be in Camp Verde. Um, how it affects and works with other communities within the, within the Verde Valley um, should be equally born and supportive um, of their efforts. I don't believe that Camp Verde should become a, com a bedroom community to Cottonwood by any means, um, which is a term I've heard often. And I believe that some of the things that need to be changed uh, are for progress. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. We can still maintain a small town environment 
with a progressive attitude. Thank you. David Boyle, I'll ask you to take the next question first. And that is, what types of businesses would you like to see come to Camp Verde? Well, <laughs> it's a very simple answer, it's like all. Um, there's clean industry areas designated in the plan that we should attract um, to the area. That's for employment. Retail offers a lot of employment too, but sometimes very limited. Um, I'd like to see another grocery store. I'd like to see some mass merchandising type outlets. Maybe not huge like a Walmart, but maybe um, smaller in, in, in scope. Um, some others that could complement the community. Um, restaurants are fine, but you can only have so many restaurants with the population base that we have. Um, and the, then the problem is supporting them all. So I'd like to see us um, uh, broaden out and see a diversity. Thank you. Charlie. How much time? Two minutes. Okay. <clears throat> the council has an issue coming up before it in, uh, in the near future we're going to be exploring that very thing. And there are companies that basically, for the lack of a better term, it's data mining, and they can tell us 86322 residents how far they drive, what they spend their money on, uh, the businesses that they shop with. As far as I know, there's never been an inventory as to what types of businesses we have. I met with three different grocery store industries in Phoenix at the League of Cities and Towns. Their bean counters that make the decisions on whether they have new grocery stores or not said that Camp Verde 86322 needs 20,000 residents in order to have a new grocery store. We're trying to get them to take a look at Lake Montezuma, Rimrock, Beaver Creek area in conjunction with Camp Verde because that puts us at about 17,005. We would hope that they would look at that with the economic conditions of today, be able to look at uh, what land is available and with the hopeful passage of the new uh, general plan, it will give clarity to those businesses as to where they would fit. Prior to this, they had no idea where they would fit and I was told by two professional people in that industry to say they did not they wouldn't darken our door of the community development office because they did not see where they would fit. And I have more to say about that, but I'm running out of town. Thank you. Thank you. And Charlie German will ask you to take the next question first. Do you have any plans about how to include more residents of Camp Verde in decisions made regarding the town's future, especially special interests, for example, the park as a first priority for town money? A few years ago, we had um, a community uh, forum, a number of community meetings where we had the dial-up kind of thing on how people uh, were in favor of certain aspects of the, uh, of the park. We have that plan. It's on the shelf. We are looking at that. In fact, uh, we're, we're in our CIP project, our capital improvement project, we're looking at the development of the eastern roadway into that new uh, park and the development possibility of a couple of ball fields. Uh, that information is available. That's just a matter of without the tax increase that we passed, which resulted in a uh, attempted recall, uh, without that funding, we wouldn't be talking about this today but council saw at least four of us stepped up and voted for that tax increase, and the council's been pretty supportive all the way across in getting that done. Um, I think that uh, we have had, for example, uh, opportunities for the general plan. We had 141 or 142 actual open meetings open to the public to come to uh, put their information in we're always looking for different ways to get more community involvement. Generally, what happens, we have the first or second open meeting, people come and their answers are recorded, put down and put in place, and they feel very comfortable about that, and we don't see them again until it actually comes before council. Thank you. Thank you. David. I don't have enough information to answer that question. So the question asks about 
your plans um, regarding the town's making decisions with respect to the town's future, especially special interests. For example, someone who might make the park the first priority for town money. How would you respond to special interests that want to drive certain priorities? For example, making the park a first priority. Well, for, first off, I think we'd have to listen to the special interest requests. Um, secondly, if the park is going to become the primary um, um, source of spending the funds available, then it would be a decision the council would have to make based on priorities and the needs. Um, I don't know where the park system is fitting into the town structure at this time um, and where, the, where there are other needs that may be more important to, to look at. Um, I would have to defer that to the council. Okay. That was a question about special interests in terms of projects. This next question has to do with demographic constituencies. David Boyley will ask you to answer this question first. Who do you feel you represent on council? Seniors, youth, working people, et cetera. How do you plan to, or have you, met with constituents to find out what concerns and priorities they have? I would represent all entities of the town, uh, whether they be seniors or not. Um, it just seems that there are more seniors in Camp Verde than, um, than, I'm, <laughs> than I'm used to seeing in one place. Um, I don't mean that viciously by any means. Uh, in a joking manner, I've, I've been known to say I've never met so many old people in my life as I have since I've been here in Arizona. Um, but I'm one of those, so I'm included. In order to have that answer effectively, I would have to listen to everyone, address their needs as it's prioritized, and move on from there. Thank you. Charlie. Uh, obviously, I represent everyone in the community. It's by definition a mayor and common council. That means the entire town of Camp Verde. Um, I think it's uh, really important that people be aware of what the process is. We have an annual budget uh, input by the community in fact, we had a community forum on the budget this, this last year, which is a little bit of change in format. I thought it was well received, and we're looking to expand that this next year. That's really where we ask the community coming forward. When you have a limited number of dollars that are spent, and we have no property tax except for the sanitary district, and we use it through the cash registers, and that's where our funding comes from. So we're looking for community input, and I, there are three reasons Camp Verde, Camp Verde uh, incorporated. Better police coverage from what we had with the Sheriff's Office, our roads, and for ball fields. We're 35 years into this and we still don't have adequate ball fields. I vow to you, we're going to have, with the rest of the council, we're going to have ball fields. It's in our CIP projects. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that both candidates answered the first part of the question, who they felt they represent, and both pretty much said everybody. I'm going to, I think we have time, so I want to ask the second part of the question again, and Charlie, we'll start with you on this. How do you plan to, or have you already, met with constituents to find out their concerns and priorities? So have you met with constituents already to find that out? And if not, what are your plans to do that? Well, yes, uh, that process has happened in a couple of, of ways. Number one is through the general plan. You have our, our build-out strategies, what the community wants. We also have a council approved, which was generated by businesses and citizens within the community. It's focused future number two, and that APS helped facilitate that and develop that document. So those are the general plan, the uh, focus future two uh, is really what drives what we're, we're doing and also with our budget and having opportunity for the citizens to have an input on it. But I dare say 
there is not a day that I go to Bash's or some other store in Camp Verde that I don't have constituents come up and tell me what they, they think we need to be doing. And part of that is explaining what we've already done and what the process is and how they can write letters as well. They don't have to come to a council meeting. I like for them to, they don't have to. So thank you. Thank you. David, have you met with constituents to find out their concerns and priorities? And what, or if you have not, what are your plans to do that? I've met, <clears throat> in, in campaigning, I've met with some of them, and then some of them are very bashful and others are not. Um, what I have found, however, is that when the general plan was being uh, touted at a particular stage in its development, um, not many people showed up to voice their opinion or to review it and, and either acknowledge that their interests are being taken care of or not. Um, that issue is probably an ongoing issue, um, and people would much rather talk to you one-on-one -on, -one on the sidewalk rather than um, than not uh, discuss it any further. So I don't know where the answer really lies. Um, I think Charlie probably said it best. Um, he had the information that was developed, um, and they worked on it from there. Thank you. And David Boyley will ask you to take the next question first. And that is, it's a two-part question. If you were elected, what's the first thing you'd like to change and what's the one thing you would not want to change? Well, I'm trying to think of the second part before the first. <clears throat> um, to change the process in which people uh, can voice their opinion at the council meeting is one of the areas I'd like to change. I've stated that earlier. Um, if it's legal and possible for the citizens to voice their opinion on a topic being considered by the, the city council, uh, I believe their the forum should be presented for them to do that before the council discusses the pros and cons of the topic and then makes a decision. Um, what I don't want to change um, I don't know what that is. I'm open, I'm open to um, always improving things. Um, because there's always something that can be improved. I don't know that there's anything that's not improvable. Okay, thank you. Charlie. I don't know of, um, there's always uh, ways in which you can improve. I think probably one of the major things that uh, I would like to present to council to come to a decision on is that I don't know how many of you have ever been to a hospital or medical facility, but within a few days you get a phone call and you get a, or you get a postcard or some kind of survey on your computer, whatever, asking how did we do? What did, what, how do we need to improve? We have a number of areas in our town with our staff, and one of the major areas is that of the community development and permitting process. I would like to see us have an evaluation, exit evaluation, from those individuals that have used our processes. That way we can have an early alert on something that did not go and did not go well. I remember that there, are, there was one, um, a lot of contention around having 10 years to get a local wine tasting room approved. Well, the problem is the owner of that who was trying to accomplish it never came and filled out the application. And we don't start the clock until that application is, is uh, started. I think education of the community of people that are coming in, go to the community development uh, department first, even before you buy a piece of property. I think our uh, general plan will give clarity on where you'll be able to fit uh, more so than it is now. but. Um, I think that's one of the areas I would like to see as an evaluation of how did that work for our clients. Thank you. Charlie German, I'll ask you to take the next question first. I'm tired. <laughs> Hang in there, Charlie. We're almost done. Okay. Okay. What is, this is a hard question, though. What is the biggest challenge facing Camp Verde, and how would you go about dealing with that challenge? 
honest to Pete, I think the largest challenge that we as a council face is how in the world do we get information out to our citizens? I think if we started everything as a rumor, the word would <laughs> fly like wildfire. But if it's something, you know, it's not your passion, it might take weeks for you to, to clue into it. But th honestly, that is one of the main areas. We found in just a little research on how people got their information, and you know what, when Bash is allowed to have those uh, flyers put in the grocery bags on Wednesdays, that was how people got their information with flyers. Uh, you and, and tell me how many people have a land, landline anymore and they have, uh, and unless you know what their cell phone number is, I, unless you know where they live, it's very hard to get in contact And with. how would you deal with that challenge? Well, one of the things that I uh, ask for us to do, and I, I wrote letters to the various churches and 501c3s for issues that come before council that could be of real impact to our community. For example, notification of uh, the 260 and how that might possibly uh, affect us. Uh, be able to write letters, not lobbying them or telling them how they should vote or anything else, but giving them information, factual information that we have as a town and then allowing them to share that with their congregations. We have, I think, 17 churches and organizations that have uh, volunteered to participate with the town in improved communication. So that's one area, but I don't think it's satisfactory. Uh, like I say, I don't, I, we haven't solved that problem yet. Thank you. David, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing Camp Verde, and how would you go about dealing with that challenge? I think the biggest challenge facing Camp Verde um, is always going to be communications. However, uh, I would concentrate more on the development of the area. Um, development by the area, I mean that those who wish to minimize development can can compromise to a healthy, uh, improved uh, process in which the town will grow. And that's necessary for us in this area to do so um, because of the, the needs coming at us from the highways, both north and south and east and west, and how we can capitalize on that stuff. I believe that how do we attract people to invest in the town um, for example, the need for apartments and, and or rental um, sites. Uh, there are prime areas that are, that, that are here now. One is probably right there next to the, um, the new medical center, um, especially for the elderly people, so they could have access to the, med the medical services. Um, but who's going to step up and say, okay, I'm going to invest and build that? Uh, that, that's an issue, and I don't know if there's an answer, except maybe to talk about it, find out what's, the, what's inhibiting the process, and then try to make improvements in that, in that area. Um, you know, we can talk about economic development until we're blue in the face, but unless we're setting goals and establishing um, a process, even if it's repetitious, um, to get it rolling, uh, we're not going to accomplish anything. Okay, thank you. Um, it's now time for our closing statements. Each candidate will have two minutes for that. We began opening statements with Charlie German, so we will begin closing statements with David Boyley. Um, you have two minutes. Thank, thank you. <clears throat> we touched on some of those, of those things I want to say in my closing statement, and one of them is economic development. How do we attract businesses to that are interested in doing something here in Camp Verde. Is Camp Verde friendly towards the business? Um, and I guess we have to analyze and look at that. We need to prioritize the goals and attract to attract interest in developing apartments and housing. The infrastructure issues are always going to be um, how good or how much more can you do in a town? Uh, we have, to, I would think, we're developing an approach 
uh, with priorities for road repair, uh, definitely for flood control issues in neighborhoods where it's definitely in a need. And those areas have been identified. We just need to know how can we get at it and prioritize uh, when we're going to get it done. Um, discuss um, and conclude the water franchise issues um, here in the town. Is the town ready for that, that project or not? If so, we need to move on with it. Sometimes the process takes too long um, for, and its personalities are sometimes getting in the way of, the, of getting it achieved. Um, help accomplish the council goals and interest to achieve positive results for the council, the town, the management, and its, and its development. I think it's the goals in general that we can, we can all work on to get that done. Thank you. Charlie German, two minutes for your closing statement, please. Yes, I, once again, I would uh, just say there are a number of projects that we have um, undertaken to do. A lot of it hasn't hit the public yet because we're still involved in the process. One of the major accomplishments with flood control has been out at Verde Lakes. Um, we've had at least four or five floods over the years in Verde Lakes, and then we had two successive floods, and we were able to accomplish 100, well, it's well over 300,000, I think it was, to have the bullpen wash uh, reestablished with the berms and uh, reseeding and cleaning up. And if you've not been out there to take a look at it, those people that 27 homes that were flooded out are absolutely ecstatic today that that has been accomplished and it's been completed. We're looking through the, with the Corps of Engineers to be able to accomplish something similar with the actual Clear Creek area. There are a number of complications that we have to have lined up for the town to have uh, legal status in order to have that accomplished. Um, economic development is, is paramount. I think we've streamlined and made some changes with our economic development. The use of the new uh, general plan is going to bring real clarity for those individuals who want to invest in our community and they can see very easily that they, where they will fit as it is now, they would have to come into town, request a general plan uh, amendment at a certain time in the year, money up front and no guarantee. Probably to be able to develop their commercial area, they'd also have some residential. They'd request an area of uh, planning and zoning change and that's money up front and no guarantee. That's not where you want your investors to start. I think we have a solution to that with a general plan. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask the audience to help me thank the Camp Verde mayoral candidates, David Boyley and Charlie German. Thank you all for coming out and participating. There's more information outside about the candidates, and if Thanks you need to register to vote, we are really happy to help you do that. Just ask us questions. Have a great night.